Hello, and welcome back to the podcast today. We are talking about daylight savings time as the title represents. It's coming. If you're listening to this in 2024, this is airing on March, no, February 27th. It is happening on March 10th. So the night of March 9th to March 10th, which a lot of people say is their least favorite day of the year, my mom included, which unfortunately it's happening near her birthday this year. But the point is of me saying this is that daylight savings time is coming. What do I do to prepare and why does this matter for vestibular disorders? That is really the question that I often get. It does matter. It matters a lot for vestibular disorders for a couple of reasons. The first reason it matters is because sleep is something that will absolutely affect your threshold, how likely you are to get an attack, general dizziness from triple PD, your focus, your brain fog, your ability to want to do things, and more. Sleep is so, so important. Sleep is the time of the night where our brain and our body cleans itself out, recovers, builds new neural pathways, all of these things. So if you are trying to do something or anything to reduce the amount of dizziness you're having, to change your neural circuits, to change your neural pathways, you have to be sleeping. I say a lot of times like you have to be exercising, you have to be doing this and that and the other. That's all true, but you also need to sleep. People say what's more important, sleep or exercise. It's like saying, do I need to drink water or eat food? You got to do both, right? You have to be sleeping. You have to be exercising. This is not about exercise today, but I'm a PT. I can't get away with not talking about exercise. It's just not going to happen. So do we need to sleep? Yes. We can do an entire other podcast on like why we need to sleep and things like that. That is an entire module in vestibular group fit. It is part of the basics. It's really incredibly important. I cannot even tell you how important it is. That's why it's part of the basics because you choose one of the basics, you focus on it for a few weeks, and then you add another one. It's a very step-by-step, regimented, intentional processing group that I will personally guide you through. Um, But sleeping is going to be important. Again, when you sleep well, your dizziness will be reduced, your ability to do neuroplasticity will be increased, your brain fog will be reduced, you will want to be motivated, or you will feel more motivated on a regular basis, it's easier to eat healthier foods, it's easier to drink more water, it's easier to do all of the things that you need to do when you are sleeping. So really, really, really important. Now daylight savings time. This does not happen all over the world. It doesn't even happen in Arizona, lucky you guys. But what does happen is you the the time changes. And I used to be a bartender. I don't know if that's like a super commonly known fact about me, but I used to be a bartender. And this is the night of the year, well, I guess in the fall, where things fall back. Or if it's in the spring, it springs forward. When I was a bartender, I loved Saturday nights on the spring forward because, no, that's actually a lie. I hate it all the time as a bartender. This is why. When it springs forward, it goes from 2 a.m. on Sunday morning to 3 a.m. It skips the hour of 2 o'clock. It goes from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m., which means all of a sudden I'm cleaning up the bar from it closing at 2 a.m., and all of a sudden it's 3 a.m. Like, what a nightmare, honestly. Because then it's 3 a.m. and then I would have to get up for physical therapy school at 7. So that was a nightmare. And you don't get done cleaning for like 45 minutes to an hour. So part two is then going to be fall back. So at 2 in the morning, it becomes 1 in the morning. And you do the hour from 1 to 2 twice. Again, this is a silly system. And we're not going to go into why you do it or why we do it still as Americans. We still do it. I know a couple other countries do it. but Still, it's silly. It feels great to fall back because you just get an hour extra of sleep unless you're a bartender, in which case you stay open for an extra hour because you have to do 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. twice, and then you get to clean up. Anyway, neither here nor there. What are we going to do about this situation? The first thing that I want you to do starting today when you are listening to this, hopefully, again, February 27th is when this comes out. You have until the night of March 9th, which gives you approximately 10 days, a little under two weeks. The first thing I want you to do is starting tonight, adjust your sleep schedule by 15 minutes. So let's say you normally go to bed around 1030. Push it back to 1015. That's not very far. You just have to adjust like a couple of things. 
Maybe you eat a few minutes earlier. Maybe you brush your teeth a few minutes earlier. Just do everything a couple of minutes earlier and just get in bed. You might not fall asleep until 1030, 1045. That's okay. Give yourself the next couple of weeks to adjust to that. So adjust to 1015 for the next couple of days, then 10 o'clock for a couple of days, and then 945. And I know it gets weird when you go from 10 to 9. You're like, whoa, what am I doing? I personally am going to sleep. I get in bed at like 8.30 p.m. I get up at 5. I go to sleep around 9 probably, but I try to like aim to get in bed around 8.30 and read. I'm going to be adjusting that schedule. I'm going to eat a little bit earlier in the day. I'm going to do my bedtime routine a little bit earlier. I'm going to turn off my screens a little bit earlier. I'm really just going to shut down my life and shut down my house a little bit earlier earlier. And again, it doesn't have to be you're starting a whole hour earlier. That's silly. What I want you to do, again, is prioritize your schedule and break it down to a little bit earlier. When you are breaking it down to a little bit earlier, it's going to take increased tenacity. You're going to have to increase the amount of focus as well that you need in order to do this. And this is because Our brain is used to doing one thing after another, after another, after another at a very specific time of the day, no matter whether or not you know it. And that really sets your circadian rhythm. Your circadian rhythm is the rhythm of which in a 24-hour cycle, your body is doing stuff, releasing hormones, getting sleepy, waking up, all those things. That's your circadian rhythm. And you know what it is set by? Sunlight. Sunlight is our friend. So what are we doing about sunlight? First thing in the morning at least for the next two weeks, hopefully forever, I want you to get at least 10 minutes of sunlight. And 10 minutes if you're standing outside and it's warm and sunny. It doesn't have to be warm, but sunny. So you Californians, love you guys, get outside in the sun. If you are like me now and you live in a cold place, can relate because I live in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It is freezing and snowing outside. Currently, I'm looking outside when I'm recording this. Overcast. And the weather is saying that it is going to dump snow for the next seven days. So I am with you guys in your cold weather climates. I promise. I'm looking at the exact weather right now. I'm looking it up. I promise you. I am with you in this, like, I don't want to stand outside situation. Standing next to a window technically does not count. And I personally, just to rub salt in the wound, wake up before the sun rises all year round, 5 a.m. Sometimes it rises at like 5.15 usually rises, I don't know, 6, 6 30, 7, depends on the time of the year, right? Okay. Because of that, what do I do? I have a blue light light and everyone hates on blue light. Blue light is not bad just across the board. Blue light, not ideal before you go to bed, right? We don't want to be watching like action shows with like super and in- high intensity, whatever. No. What we want to be doing is being really calm before bed. But first thing in the morning, we need a lot of blue light. Guess what does that best? The sunshine. So if you're in a cloudy, overcast area like me, a 30-minute walk outside is better than the five-minute walk outside, but it just really depends on your tolerance. You can literally just sit outside on your porch. You do not have to go for a walk. Just sitting outside and letting that blue light come into your eyes. Super important. Do not stare at the sun, please. That's not what I'm recommending. Just being outside near the sun. The next thing, next best thing is a 10,000 Lux lamp. And now someone in group got one of these and she was like, I stared at it and I can only stare at it for three seconds before my eyes hurt. Do not stare at it, please. That is a common misconception. We're not staring at the light. You would never stare at a normal light. Don't stare at the light. What you do want to do is turn on the light and just have it on around you. So like in the morning when I get up, I, I'm i a person who gets up, switches on the lights, and then I go to the gym. So when do I have time to look at the sun? Never, because it's 525 in the morning. So what I do is I turn on that 10,000 Lux light, and I tap it all the way up. And then I just like brush my teeth, wash my face, like just get ready in the bathroom. And I have it on in the bathroom when I'm getting ready. And that gives me at least five, maybe 10 minutes of that bright light in the morning. And it helps with my sleep so much. Uh, last Sunday, I didn't turn it on Sunday morning and I literally could not fall asleep because I also forgot to go outside in the morning. Like couldn't fall. It took me till 11. I got in bed at 9.15. I didn't fall asleep till 11.15. If that's any 
representation of how well that thing works. And I didn't even notice it was working. And then I sat like in my house and it was dark and like cozy Sunday morning. I was going to go skiing later, but I was like, oh, I'm sleepy. I was baking a loaf of bread. I didn't turn my lights on. Couldn't sleep that night. So seriously, it is a helpful thing. Get that 10,000 Lux light. I will link uh, an Amazon one in the show notes. So we are slowly adjusting your schedule as well as prioritizing light. Not only light in the morning, but also light in the evening. The evening waves of blue light are different than the morning waves of blue light. We don't have to get into the science of this, but they're a little bit different. The angle in the sky is different. Your body understands, oh, that's nighttime light versus morning light. And when you prioritize sunset light as well, so just like sit outside and watch the sunset. Sit outside as the sun sets. Whether or not you can see the sun is irrelevant but kind of timing it to that and then letting your body fall asleep naturally. Try not to turn on any overhead lights in general when you're trying to sleep, but especially for the next couple of weeks. Overhead light, don't think so. I had a friend recently, like a newer friend of mine. She's like, I have never in my life turned on an overhead light, which I think is hilarious because like I love an overhead light, but I'm really trying to like get into mood lighting, which if you ask my college roommates, they're like, ew, you literally hate mood lighting, which is hilarious to me. But again, trying to prioritize my sleep hygiene is so important, like literally so important. So getting into a habit of not turning on a lot of overhead lights and going outside with the sun, both rising and setting as much as you can. Again, this is not going to be a perfect science and that's okay. Now, other things to consider, keeping your room cool, super, super important. And a lot of people are like, I can't sleep unless I'm warm, put socks on. Some people say sleeping with socks makes you a psychopath. I couldn't disagree more. Just Sleep with socks on if you need socks, okay? Sleep with gloves on if you need gloves. But what I do want you to do is set your room to between 65 and 72. It shouldn't be warm in there. Your body has to physically drop two degrees in order to fall asleep and stay asleep. And then your body temperature fluctuates, like rises and falls throughout the night, which is so, so fascinating in order to get you into different phases of sleep. So you have like light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep. We have all these different types of sleep with different kinds of brain waves. And those are a lot of it is dictated by your temperature. You can actually get a mattress that will help regulate your temperature, which are quite expensive, but I think it's called an eight sleep. I don't personally have one, but I know a lot of people do. That all being said, keep your room cool. Shift all your things a little bit earlier, prioritize that AM and PM light and move your body for the next couple of weeks. Go for a few walks, right? do a couple strength exercising workouts, join vestibular group fit and do a workout in there. Remember group is so much more than a workout, but we do feature workouts every single day on weekdays. Um, and then please play it cool on Sunday, knowing that like in general, spring forward and fall back is one of the days with the most car accidents, heart attacks, just like weird stuff that happens. Again, we shouldn't still be doing this, but we are. It is a day with a lot of wacky stuff in it. So what do you do to help prioritize your personal health? I am going to play it cool on Sunday. I am probably, if I had like an aura ring or a whoop or one of those sleep trackers, it probably isn't going to say like, you're a hundred percent gung ho, right? The time changed and our entire life revolves around time. Literally everything revolves around time. So what are the things on Sunday that you can do to rejuvenate yourself? For me, I'm going to get some morning sunlight. I'm going to try not to sleep in a bajillion hours. I am going to keep my morning routine of having lots of protein and water for breakfast. I am going to do all of these things that help me, that are intentional, that are positive for my health and fill my cup. All of those things are the exact things that are going to fill your cup and reduce your threshold. I know it's kind of ironic because we talk about like going to filling your cup too much is a bad thing, but I mean, fill your cup as a positive and reduce your threshold as a positive. You're building a bigger bucket. I prefer bucket. You're building a bigger cup size. That's what you really need. You need a bigger, you need a 25 ounce pint cup glass, not pint. Pint is 16 ounces, right? Yeah. You need like a 25 or 30 ounce glass, not a pint glass. That's what we really are saying here. So again, just to recap, our our dizziness and vestibular disorders and all chronic illnesses like Hashimoto's affected by sleep 
a ton, which is what I have, which I seek help for. And they're like, please prioritize your sleep. So that's something I've really worked on for the last couple of years. I actually have Dr. Jenna to thank for my sleep schedule. So big shout out to her. Um, she made me start sleeping in graduate school. Her theory, which is backed by science, so it's not a theory. She would tell me when I would be up late studying that I'm not going to learn anything else, neither, and I'm definitely not going to retain it if I do not go to sleep tonight. And so she would make me go to bed. And honestly, it's the best thing anyone's ever said to me, frankly. Sleep. It helps clean your brain. It helps build new neural pathways. It does literally everything that you would want to do when you are sleeping and sleeping quality. Sleeping quality is almost more important than sleeping quantity. Because if you're like sleeping not very well for like 10 hours or sleeping really, really well for like six or seven hours, hopefully eight, the sleep quality is actually superior. So keeping that room really dark, keeping it super, super, super quiet, keeping it really, really cool in there, all of those things combined into one thing are what is going to help you sleep better quality. Again, shifting your routine back, your diet, focus on eating really good foods, staying super hydrated, and prioritize that bedtime routine very heavily at least for the next couple of weeks. It doesn't necessarily have to be forever and ever, but at least for the next few weeks, I am begging you because that is going to help you reduce the amount of attacks, reduce the frequency, all of the things that you want to reduce, honestly. So, Last week, we had a bunch of wins that were literally like, I've gone more than eight or 10 days without an attack. That is phenomenal. And a lot of it is because of these basics of I'm sleeping better, eating better, hydrating better, and really taking care of my physical health, which seems so simple and almost so silly, but is so incredibly important. All right. I love y'all and I will see you in the next episode. Please drop any questions in the comments um, and I'll try to address them in future episodes. See ya. Mm -hmm.